Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Now usually when building an Electron app, you don't need a module bundler like Webpack uh, because it has Node.js built inside it, so you can already require modules and, and do all that with it. Also, you don't really need uh, Webpack for like transpiling and smoothing out all the browser differences because you're really only targeting uh, one version of Chrome. So why would you use Webpack with Electron? Well, the main reason is uh, for compatibility reasons, such as if you're building a desktop app and a web app and you want to use the same code and the same build tools for both of them. Now we're also gonna be adding in Vue.js into it and the built-in APIs in the browser work perfectly fine um, for very simple or, or small little projects. But if you're trying to get more animations or uh, a bigger, more complex app, uh, Vue.js is definitely gonna be a little bit easier, a little bit nicer to you uh, for those kind of animations and things too. So we want to use that with our Electron app as well. So let's create a fresh folder here and run npm init to create our package JSON. Yeah, our package JSON is going to store all our metadata and dependencies for our app. So next, we'll need to install a few million libraries. Uh, starting with the first two libraries mentioned in the title, we're going to do npm install uh, Electron to install Electron, and we're also going to install Webpack and then save those to our dev dependencies. Now the next uh, package we're going to install is uh, just a, a package that makes working um, with Electron and Webpack a lot easier. Uh, and that package is Electron-Webpack. And so we're also going to install that and save it to our dev dependencies. OK, let's go ahead and open up our folder here. And Electron Webpack is really great and makes uh, working with Electron and Webpack together a, a whole lot easier, but it does come with its own uh, opinions, such as the folder structure. So we're going to create a folder called uh, SRC to hold our source files. And then Electron always has uh, at least two processes running. Uh, one is a main process, which is kind of like Node.js in the heart of your app. And another is a renderer process, which is like Chromium, uh, the browser display kind of part of your app. So we're going to create a folder for each. So a main folder, and then we're going to create a renderer folder. So having these folders separated really helps you know what process you're in. So we're going to start with the, the main portion of our app. So we're going to create a index.js file. And this will be kind of our main starting point of the app. And so what we need to do is we need to import a few libraries to use, such as the app, uh, so we can get the app instance we're running. Uh, and we're going to use, also import the browser window, because we want to create new browser windows uh, from uh, Electron here. Next, when our app lets us know that it's ready to actually do some stuff, we are going to create a new browser window here. Uh, so we'll just add a little function here, and we'll create a new window. Uh, say new browser window, like so. Now the next thing we need to do is create a file for the renderer process, uh, and we're just going to leave it blank for now, um, and we will fill in uh, the stuff later. Great. Now we can go over here into our package JSON, and we can change our start script here uh, to run uh, Electron Webpack. So let's say Electron dash Webpack. And we're going to put space dev because we want to run it in development mode, uh, which will give us all the good uh, live uh, reload kind of things and stuff as we build our Electron app. So we can save that and go here to our console and now type in npm start to start up our Electron app. It'll finish building. And as you can see, we get a blank Electron app running. So now we need to connect up this browser window to the uh, server that Electron and, or that Webpack is running behind the scenes here. So to do that, we're going to go to here to our main, and uh, we're going to set the window uh, URL. So we'll say window.load URL, and this is going to be a URL to the uh, the development server that Webpack is running behind the scenes here. So we'll say uh, localhost. And then um, the, the port that it's running on is always going to be a different thing. It's set by the uh, it's set by an environment variable. So we'll just say process.env to access all the environment variables. And the environment variable is electron underscore webpack underscore WDS underscore port. Cool. So this is just going to point our browser window that we opened up to the the uh, the, the server that webpack is running and live reloading on behind the scenes while we're in in development mode. So now if we go back here to our terminal and start up Webpack again, you can see we get our app up and running. And then if we go here into our uh, renderer process uh, and uh, do some kind of things such as like hi, 
you can see we now, uh, it live reloads and, and updates and we get that alert that says hi. Or if you say you go in here and you edit the, uh, the main process here, such as we wanna maybe change the width of our browser window to a little bit wider here, um, it's not gonna do that live reload um, that it does with the, the browser. Instead, it needs to, it knows it needs to reload the entire app and it's just gonna go ahead and do that automatically for you here. And, and reload the entire app. Now, if you've been building a lot of Electron apps uh, without using Electron-Webpack, uh, you have to admit, this is really cool that it, it does this. All right, so now we are ready to get fancy with our user interface. So we're gonna close up our app here and go here to our terminal, and we are ready to install Vue.js and a million more libraries. So we're gonna say npm install, and we're gonna first install Vue, and then we're gonna install Vue Loader, and view a template compiler. So this way, Webpack knows how to compile uh, the single file components that Vue.js has, which are very fantastic to use, and we definitely want those. So I'm gonna save all of those to my dev dependencies. The next thing we need to do is tell Webpack how to deal with .view file types. So let's go ahead and create a Webpack dot config dot js file through the magic of off screen typing and copy and paste i'm going to paste in this webpack config here that simply just says if a file ends with dot view uh, we want to use the view loader to compile it into javascript um, that, and then you know use that javascript so now we're ready to go into our renderer process this renderer dot uh, index dot js file here and instead of alerting high, we can now start using view uh, in our renderer process. So we can say import view uh, from the library view here. Then we'll go ahead and create a new instance of view here. And uh, by default, Electron Webpack will add a div tag with the ID uh, app to attach to. So conveniently, we can use that uh, to our attach our view instance here to that, uh, that app div tag there. And then uh, simply when it renders, we're just going to render out some simple tag. We'll just say uh, h1 obligatory bear. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. Let's fire up our app. Um, and so we can work on it uh, with live reload because, you know, what's the point otherwise? Cool. So we know it's working. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, create a single file component for our app here. So we'll go here into our renderer process and we're gonna create a file called uh, app.view. And in here we can create a template to represent the template of, whoop, not that, the template of our, um, our app here. And that will just simply be a div tag uh, for example purposes that renders out a variable uh, called name here. So we'll add a script here, um, and we'll say export default, and we'll attach a script for our app. And our script is just gonna compose of uh, some data, and we're gonna return a data uh, with the, the variable name to feed to our template here uh, with another obligatory bear, but this time in all lowercase. Wait, no, the other one's in lowercase. Let's capitalize the first thing to make it a little different so it doesn't look like the same. Okay, let's go back over here into our index in the renderer. And now since we have this app, we can use it. So we'll say import app from dot slash app dot view uh, to get our app. And so instead of rendering out our own H1 tag here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna render our app instead. And so I'm gonna hit save and you can see now it has replaced, um, it has live reloaded our app here and it is now a div tag, and it's complete loading from our uh, single file component from um, Vue.js. So at this point, you're pretty much free to use Vue.js as you would like any other Vue.js app. You know, add in your fancy animations and all that other cool stuff that uh, Vue.js does. But so far, we've been doing everything in development mode and everything works fine in development mode, but now you're ready to actually build an actual desktop app and just, you know, build a distributable that you can give to other people to run uh, so they don't have to do all this stuff themselves, right? That's the whole point. So uh, what we need to do is we need to go here to our terminal and we need to install uh, something called Electron Builder. So we'll say npm install Electron-Builder and save that to our dev dependencies. 
Fantastic. So now the next thing we need to do is go here into our package JSON and we're going to add another script here. We'll call this script build. And so right here you can see when we're starting our uh, Electron Webpack, we're, we're starting in development mode. And so if we just want to build all the files out in production mode, we're just going to call Electron Webpack without the space dev. Um, and then the next thing, once it has built, uh, Electron Webpack has built all of the files and everything into this distributed folder, um, what we need to do next is run uh, Electron Builder to actually build the, uh, the physical .app or .exe file um, that we are going to distribute. But before we run that build script, we want to make some changes to our app to handle the bundled code in production mode a little better and to make the app actually work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here into our main process and we're going to import a few more libraries that we're going to use. So the first one we're going to import is path, not parth, path from path. This is a built-in Node.js one. Uh, and as well as we're going to import format uh, as format URL, um, except I'm going to spell it oddly for no apparent reason, from another built-in Node.js uh, library called URL. Then uh, we also, anytime we're, we're Electron Webpack or Webpack is building in production mode, it's going to give us an environment flag um, to let us know that it's um, in development mode versus production mode. And it does that through this uh, the environment variables here through process.environment. And we'll say node underscore environment. This is kind of like a common uh, environment variable to set whether you're in production or development mode. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to say if we're in, we're in development mode, if this is not set to uh, the, the, the text production. Cool, so now we can go down here and this development server is only going to be available to us if we're running the Webpack development server. And that's where we get all that, that live reload goodness and everything like that. But in our actual app that's going to be running for people, we don't want to be running a server in the background. Uh, we just want to serve the, the, the compiled index file and, the, and all the assets with it. So we can say uh, if is in development mode, uh, we definitely want to run this with um, all of that live reload uh, goodness. Otherwise, we're in production mode. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to load a URL here, and we're going to format the URL here. And this is going to uh, be given an object to build this URL, such as the uh, the path name here, which we will say path name join, and we'll get the current directory name, and we'll use the index.html file. This is the index.html file that uh, Electron Webpack will build for us. Uh, and then the protocol we're going to be using is going to be the file protocol, and then slashes true, because why not? So all of this is saying is that if we're in development mode, you know, use the uh, development the development server that Webpack is running. Otherwise, if we're in production mode and this is the app that's running on other people's machine, all we, we just need to use a compiled index.html file and we don't need to run any kind of fancy live reload stuff behind the scene. All right, so let's give this a try. Now we can go over here and since we have our build script all ready to go to compile with Electron Webpack and then bundle with our distributable with Electron Build, we can go here to our terminal and we can say npm run build and fire it away. All right, so now three or four billion years later, we can uh, go in here and open up our folder. And as you can see in our dist folder, it has created a number of files, including a app that we can actually run or a DMG file that we can use to install our app. See there, has that nice little uh, drag to applications thing that's really cool with Max. Now if you go and try to run your app and you get this nasty uh, little error, uh, that's a problem with, um, that's a current bug with uh, Electron Webpack um, and I'll show you how to fix it. So instead of using the index.html file that comes with um, Electron Webpack, we're going to create our own. So here in the source folder what we're going to do is create our index.html file. And this is pretty much copied from uh, from Electron Webpack itself, but it has the fix in place. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, they've fixed this bug and um, you can completely ignore this whole section of the video. Then the other thing we need to do is go into our terminal here and we need to install that library that it's missing, uh, source map uh, dash, source dash map dash support, and then save that to our dependencies. The funny thing about this is, is I don't even like source maps. Huh. Cool, so now we can fire off our build once again with that bug uh, fix in place. 
and wait another million years. I'm just kidding, it doesn't actually take a million years. I'm just not very uh, patient. Anyways, so let's go here to our uh, distributive folder now, and you can see in our Mac we have this Electron web app, and as we run it, we get the most amazing app ever uh, running uh, with our obligatory bear. Cool, as you can see, it's working. So anyways, I think this is a pretty sweet way to build Electron apps, and if you also think it's a sweet way to build Electron apps, then share it with all of those friends you have. Uh, and if you want to see more videos, then uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.